Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cooking with English Spirit. It's James Lawrence here, joined once again by Dr. John Waters. Hello, John. Evening, James. How are you? Are you I'm, feeling socially distanced today? Uh, well, I'm feeling I'm feeling hungry, certainly. So, um, good. No pressure, John. What are we What are we making this evening? We're going to do some chicken. These are chicken thighs at our favourite uh, boutique provider, Lidl, who supply only. 3 billion chicken a year. So uh, this is a rare chicken. It's got about 12 thighs on it. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing else. It's a really odd animal. We're going to do some sticky lemon chicken on a bed of kind of Asian vegetables tonight in a black bean sauce. And to make that gorgeous, we're going to use our lemon gino, which is essentially uh, a marvelous combination of fresh lemon, juice, zest, pulp, and our gin. So that's what's going to give us the gorgeous lemonness. And just for eye candy, we're going to use some of these are actual lemons. You see, they're on there. There you go. And, uh, so. That's good. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to double back once we get this going because we're going to sear these in a pan with bits and bobs, then whop them in the oven to finish off. And while they're in your oven cooking, we're not only going to do the veg, we're also going to prep a rather nice drink with this too. So. On we go, start with the chicken. Chicken is notoriously fatty and you don't want oceans of fat. So these things are wonderfully trimmed. You could do your own, just cut off the excess because that stops you having to mess around with it later. Uh, these things are incredibly inexpensive. I can't actually remember how little this was, but I think or this pack of however many, I'll count it in a moment. Um, where are we? 12 or something? Nine legs was way under a fiver. And we're going to feed uh, four people tonight with this. So it's a really inexpensive meal and a lot less expensive than nipping out to um, well-known chicken shops around the country, which we can't mention for, because they haven't given us any money to mention them. <laughs> 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 so and why are we going for chicken thighs this evening chicken thighs are really moist the meat's got for me a lot more flavor there's a lot of fat wrapped around it it's on the bone which means there's a lot more chicken flavor than you might normally get from a breast which i would reserve for doing a nice sauce with um so yeah and of course the great experience of eating off the bone is, is a lovely one to have so we've got these kind of prepped and it's just a case of whopping them in a relatively hot pan. We've gone through oils in the past because this is going to be a hottish pan. Don't use an oil that's going to burn at a low temperature. So we're going to use a little bit of vegetable oil. This is sunflower oil, which is great. Good for you and very good. You could use uh, rapeseed oil if you prefer or anything else. Ground nut oil is very good. So we're going to wait for that to come up to temperature. I'm going to lightly season our breasts. We're going to brown those breasts. While the breasts are browning, we're then going to prep a few other bits like some garlic. Brown it over and then start our reduction. Once we start to get our reduction going, we're going to glaze lightly with honey towards the end of the process and the herbs so we don't boil off all the flavour. Whop it in the oven. The whole thing, those thighs are going to take around about 15, 16 minutes to cook entirely. And we'll leave them out to stand for about another four or five minutes and that will cook them all the way through, keep them moist, but make sure they are actually cooked. So that's the plan. So we're just waiting for that to come up to temperature, which we will do in a sec, and then we'll get going. Um, <laughs> I really like a streak of that beer now, you can edit that out. Sometimes oh no, I'm going to have some now. <laughs> yeah. We do not make beer currently. <laughs> and that's not to say that we won't. Um, Mm. Just make sure I've got everything I need. About that, that. Okay. It's beginning to get there. While we're waiting for that, I'll just get some lovely money shots of this limoncino. Oh yes. What have you now that I've caught this on camera? What's in this jar, John? The tantalising jar full of lemons. Oh, this is my one of my favourite things for if you do any Moroccan food. A good feature of Moroccan food are um, pickled lemons. So if you've got any spare lemons that are just about to go off and you've got a 
fancy kill on the jar or a jar with a lid on it, all you do to make your pickling potion is two parts of water to one part sugar to one part vinegar, weight wise. So in here we've got 250 grams of standard vinegar. You can use fancier ones if you like. 250 grams of white sugar and 200 grams of water, 500 grams of water, sorry. Boil it up in a pan till the sugar's dissolved and what my lemons in there and that'll keep forever. And so what we've got here is a gorgeously sugary vinaigrette with all that lemon. And you can use these for anything. So uh, typically if you're doing a tangine, they'd be on top of your chicken or your lamb as it's steamed and cooked. Um, and then all that gorgeous um, acidity and flavor would boil down and infuse uh, your chicken or your lamb. So they're a really good go-to and it stops you wasting things, you know, if they're not quite, if you've overbought, for example. So pickling, always good. If you don't, um, if you're out of time for the veg, rather than put them in the bin. So just gonna get these going. Nice hot, if you want that sizzle. If you don't have a sizzle, take them out, put them back in. And then we'll just wrap around here. Typically when you're browning, in something like this, it's about two minutes a side to get those quite nice and brown. So while they're browning, I'm just going to slice them down to have a little bit of water. Um, which are going to add some decoration to it. The great thing about lemons is they um, Ironically, smelled just like our lemon gino. <laughs> um, so just going to keep an eye on that. So as I say, we're at about two minutes. Got some gorgeous honey for this. You can use any sort of honey that you want to use. This is um, honey that's local to Great Yeldon, actually. This is um, borage from a farm down the road, Tuffen Hall. Um, as you can see, Tuffen Hall honey. Um, uh, Angus and his wife there uh, just started keeping bees, I think, and that's rather, rather tasty. So we're using that. Hopefully it's a good thing. Next year we'll have some hives, and so we can utilize our own. So we'll grab some forks. And we'll get some in there. So we're just gonna get these brown, which they're getting to. Nice color on that one. Coming along. So again, about two minutes. Don't turn it until you've got colour. Totally and utterly wasting your time. Without colour, you don't have any flavour. And we are up looking for cooked chicken rather than poached chicken. So just wait in there. So here we want all the chicken flavour, the lemon, a little bit of saltiness to marry it in with the um, veg. And then we're going to um, get a gorgeous stickiness from a combination of the reduced liqueur and some honey to finish. And then the thyme on top. So you can see, if you look at this, see it cooking through already. It's like looking at fish, it's got fish in a pan. So we're getting, you know, a third of the way through it. So after two or so minutes, that's looking a nice color. If you're gonna do this, you can hold the bone. It won't burn your hands. But don't be brave or stupid. Make sure it's not too hot. So I'm literally about 30 seconds away from getting enough flavor on it. Stock's starting to come out. So there's lots of good flavor here. Once it turns it over, we're gonna start getting liquid in there to reduce it once these are seared. Otherwise, we'll pull flavour out if they're not seared. So, just a few seconds more. And we need them there. And give them another 30, and I'll be happy with that. Yeah, some good colour. Time. So you can see it's not going to take that long to cook because we're at least we're coming up to 40% of that chicken cooked through even with the skin on. So actually, 
my idea of about six to eight minutes in there is probably right, so maximum probably five minutes in a hot oven, five minutes to stand. What's your idea for a cocktail for that, James? Uh, well, my favourite cocktail is usually limoncino and ice, but I don't think that's very imaginative this evening, so... Uh... <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be imaginative. What, what would you garnish with it? Um, well, let me just have a... That's just straight time. It's rather tasty. So I'm start cooking these over. I'm sure that'd be quite nice. Almost like a nice spicy herby note along with the zest of the lemon. Uh, what have we got? What have you got in the fridge mixer-wise? What else can we put with this um, limoncino? We've got tonic, of course. And... We've got ice. <laughs> Uh, Not very much in the mixers here, we just need the spirits and drink even straight. Well, good job that they taste good straight. I think I will just take one on ice actually, maybe a little bit of that thyme garnish. Good idea. Always a good idea. So I've turned this over now and got some nice colour. That chicken's looking, looking bloody gorgeous actually. Look at that. Yeah. So I'm just going to waste a little sear on the underside, got some nice golden colours, crisp skin. Yeah. I've had to calculate this on the basis that one of our guests tonight always needs a protein supplement. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do ours afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. Now, what I do with this, which is really quite interesting, instead of adding seasoning, the soy sauce really works well with a veg. So, I'm just going to a little bit of soy sauce on here to give me some nice colour. Okay. And that's going to make this gorgeous in here as it starts to sizzle. I call that a uh, healthy drizzle. Is healthy drizzle and it's gorgeous. If you want to spice this element up, you can. So, ways of taking this further, chilli flakes, chopped chilies, whatever you like. But I want to be, it to be quite distinct from the vegetables that I'm putting them on. And I want my spice and my flavour and, and crunch in the veg from the, from the cashew. So I'm purposefully not spicing everything up. If you're a fan of hot spicy chicken, clearly what some chilies in there, Szechuan oil, whatever you like. The choice obviously is yours. So this is how we look here. Let's see where we're going to. And then we're just going to... Keep these nice and moist. They're starting to cook through. You see they've cooked through that. Nice underneath. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Starting to get some really interesting flavour. You can see it's swollen up. Yeah. Yeah. Our chicken is not shrinking. So we don't want to do that. And then I'm just going to glaze with a little bit of lemon gino. A lot of lemon gino. Half a bottle. Nice <coughs> one. Um, and then, uh, oh wow! Yep. Yeah, oh. So I'm then going to get these in because I want to start getting my lemons. Oh my lord! Now we're starting to. We're going to take once these come out of the oven. We've got the choice then of reducing this sauce down to a complete mm. drizzle at the end. Oh wow! Yeah. So oh, let's what, do that. That's what we're going to do. And you can see that we're going to be a little bit generous with the time because we've got oceans of it. And that starts to look bloody fantastic. Look at that. And then <laughs> we're straight in to the honey, which be generous with the honey because there's no reason not to because this is meant to be sticky. Look at this. These are all the best ingredients this chicken was carefully hand reared <laughs> <laughs> by a, a large AI device <laughs> processing just about 4,000 of a day. So, uh, nonetheless, it's looking good. So, at this point, yeah, that you just have a waft, get your nose. One, it looks great, two, it just smells fantastic. God, that smells like the yeah. best lemon chicken I've, well, I've ever smelled. So, I'm um, now. And uh, so just again about what is specifically the sticky, the handle sticky, just to point out. That's good. <laughs> Which is my pet hate, I hate sticky handle. And uh, what is the limoncino specifically adding to this other than if you were just to use lemons? Um, well, what we've done is, of course, because 
the lemons have been extracted in alcohol, all of the non-water um, soluble flavours are present here that might just simply boil off. So um, that's what we're adding. Uh, and it's very intense. Excellent. You know? um, sorry, I'm a big fan of, get, of not having sticky handles. Um, look at that. Oh, dear Lord. Get in there. Look at that old thing. That's good. Oh. Right, we're going to whop that in a hot oven for five minutes, and then we're going to bring out the chicken and eat it best. Oh yeah, and once again, so that would be a medium-high heat that you've been searing that chicken on. That's that whatever what? I can't remember. That's medium-high. Yeah. That oven technically should be at about two, oh, 220. It could be anywhere, depending on how much ultras you've got in the house tonight. <laughs> so it could be at 90. <laughs> it could be at 220. <laughs> uh, okay. It is being serviced next month. <laughs> so we'll know more then. <laughs> uh, well, let's call it five we'll minutes. warm, shall we? <laughs> call it five minutes at uh, warm <laughs> oven temperature. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Right, so next up, we're going to, um, while these are standing, we'll just rattle through getting some veg together. So this is stir fried veg. Nothing special. Just while you're getting that, let me get some veg. Do you want a lemon? Are you having a lemon gino as well, or is it just me? Uh, you go for it. Um, do you want to chill? Are you going to chill? There should be a glass in there. Yeah, what, in the fridge? Uh, well, no, there isn't actually. That's right, I'm going to put some ice in it. So, I'm just going to chop some bits. Crudely chopped some bits. Oh, Are you paused? No. Okay. Right, here's how you make a very nice lemon gino cocktail. You take some ice. Put some lovely lemon gino in it. A healthy measure to taste. If it looks like the lemon in your bottle at home has separated, that's just because some of the lemon has, uh, it, it, well, that's a natural part of the process of using fresh fruits to so give it a good shake to get this nice cloudy color spot on. I'm gonna put some thyme in there. And that's how you make a very nice drink. That was easy. Oh yes, that'll do. And of course, this would be a good time to announce that as of the 1st of July, this Limongino won gold at the Spirit Business Gin Masters prestigious awards in the gin liqueurs category. So we're even more proud of this than usual. So just chopping up some veg. This is your choice. I've got pak choy, um, sweet corn, sweet baby sweet corn, uh, which is gorgeous. I'm going to use some cashew nuts for crunch, and then spice-wise, just got these range of what look like quite nasty peppers, but they're probably gorgeous, which I'm just going to chop up willy-nilly. Add a bit of spice. Watch your finger because that can hurt, or your nail. That's why I've got nails, stops the finger coming off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which it has so far tonight, but I can't guarantee it if I carry on like this. So we've just got some peppers in there, and I'm going to get some uh, garlic, and I'll just chop those up, three cloves should be enough. And I've got a little bit of a, my favorite mix for black bean sauce. So I've got a um, combination of black bean sauce, uh, fermented uh, soybeans, um, some soy sauce, uh, a little bit of vinegar because I like the sweet and sour, and some sugar, cane syrup sugar, um, chili, and ginger in there. And that's 
Don't ever overdo that because that can swamp it all. You just need it as a bit of a finesse. And so I'm just gonna put these together. And the thing about pack choy is it looks like you've bought, you know, half a field's worth. But as we all know, once it's um, begun to melt down, to wilt down, um, there's not a lot left for it. So my newfangled hooks, which I'm very proud of. Um, it took me ages to work out it's 15 links, I'd like to point out. Um, <laughs> we tried 16, 17, 18, and uh, eventually got 15. Uh, it's meant to look higgledy-piggledy because of my lack of attention to detail when it comes to hooks. <laughs> <laughs> Countrified, they say. <laughs> Cut to the window, uh, and then you'll see a large conurbation outside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, we're just going to get a hot wok. Um, the chicken's just about done at this stage, so I'm going to bring that out and put it on a plate. Uh, use this, excuse me. Oh yeah, I think it's still on, that's good news. Um, oh, look at that. Yeah. Now that is gorgeous. I'm just going to pop that on a plate and then I'm going to reduce down that sauce to a syrup which we're going to have over the top. And then we're nearly there. So, um, in the meantime, <laughs> just so we don't run out of time. Oops, pop that in. 10 trillion bits of that later. That's going to be a right old pain in the ass to mix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's where you go. Should have bought the bigger wok, mate. <laughs> uh, but it's not happening, right? I'll we'll just wait for those leaves to fall down. <clears throat> this, uh, yeah. Oddly enough, until this point in the day, I thought I'd had a really good organisational day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give my score of nearly a half out of ten. So, just get these gorgeous things on here. And then what we're going to do, these are resting as we go. I'm going to reduce this down to syrup and glaze. Look at that. Smells fantastic, actually. Let's get those on. Bits of individual lemon on each piece just for looks. And then we're going to reduce that down to where we are, like so. Now remember, that's bloody hot. So put that on there. That will reduce down. What uh what heat is that, Hob? Um that's just <laughs> that's just ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> you could scramble an egg in a week or so on that. <laughs> That's why this needs a service. <laughs> For this recipe, you will need an ineffective hob. <laughs> it should be perfectly fine. It's just a uh, medium heat to me. Medium um, heat. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Good for scrambling right. eggs. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, all stick to the bottom. So... You might need to edit this, James, because it'll take a bit of a while. That's going to come out because that needs to end cut off it, as does that. Didn't quite go all the way down. things cooked to the level that we want. <laughs> I think I may have overdone the pack choy. <laughs> <laughs> and oddly enough, the pack <laughs> is not very evident here. <laughs> it's more large volume. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's getting that. You'll see it this wilt. And the great thing about um, pack choy is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favourite veg. Really mouth-watering. And as that comes down, 
it's important with a lot of these things they're always saying good um good recommendations for doing chow mein i'm no asian cook um reduce the water out of it and that's the great thing with this you can see it all wilting rather nicely here this is now coming down it's going to be a gorgeously nice syrup you can see it's coming down quite nicely and we literally want that to the point where we can drizzle it on our gorgeously rested chicken um, even though this hob is set to low joking aside because we've got a shallow pan the layer of water is very uh, the layer of juice is very thin yeah so the time it takes to heat up is very little so we can do the job quite effectively in that period of time yeah you see they're bubbling already yeah you know, so, so that won't take long and we're about five minutes away oh my god from having this notice i haven't added any sauce yet to this because the flavors in my sauce are quite delicate um and i want them to coat the vegetables i don't want them to boil off all those great flavors so that's what i'm doing and this is a meal that you might choose to season further with your own soy sauce. Um, but we're getting there. It's coming down quite nicely. There we go. Like the look on that. So, as a general rule, most of these veg are about wilting. So I want the leaves totally wilted and I want just a little bit of translucence in the stem. And that'll give me the mouth-watering crunch at the base, but all that, all those juicy, delicious tasting leaves. And that's how I like my pak choy. Um, there we go. It's beginning to get there. About two minutes off there. Then I'm gonna add my sauce, glaze, wait another two minutes and serve. In the meantime, you can see that that's going very nicely. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Coming down in about two or three minutes, that's going to be a gorgeous syrup. So we're pretty much there now. Now you could try Deliveroo for this. Um, I've downloaded the Deliveroo <coughs> app. A friend of mine was expounding the benefits of Deliveroo. And where we are at the Mo, I got an option of nothing or less. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's diet if, delivery. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, yeah, it's worse than keto. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, which I'd like to point out, this is nearly a keto diet. There's virtually no carb in this, apart from the honey and the sugar that we have. Um, that's nothing compared to the dessert that we're not going to share with you on this video, which is ram jam full of stuff. So this is looking rather good. Yeah, that's looking like a recognizable stir fry at this point not a wash in liquid and so now i'm going to take my secret recipe which isn't so secret because i've shared it with everyone uh, and we're just going to glaze with our sauce here and that i'm going two minutes and then i'm going to put it off and you can see so again we're just coating You might want, oh God. Now at this point, this is what I normally, um, this certainly doesn't right, sound right. This is normally where I add the nuts. So um, I'm gonna go for some seriously expensive cashew nuts because I couldn't find them anywhere else today. These are M&S nuts, around about 50 quid a nut. Oh my goodness, so don't you, tell the chicken, little could, chicken that. You yeah. could kind of uh, dramatically reduce the overall cost by uh, buying your nuts from somewhere else. Uh, Nonetheless, they look like good nuts. In case M&S would like some contract work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so literally just warming this through. And that you might want to have a sniff off and see what you think. That should be very recognizable. It's a gorgeous if I had smell of vision, this is where I turn it on. Oh. That smells mm. phenomenal. And that's exactly right. That so, smells like really good Chinese restaurant, but stripping out all of the 
yeah, the stuff that's usually this. added to make it really mouth-watering. It's just, it smells, yeah. So that, for me, is now done, okay? And we'll plate up, and you try, and we'll carry on. So, let me just, that's too hot. Got a chin ready. Another plate. And then we're there. So, with this, it's your choice. You could use um, a spoon and get some of the juice. I prefer to use um, a slotted spoon, leave the juice, so if I want to supplement with juice, I can. That's entirely your choice. So we want a mix of nice stuff. Pak choy is the preeminent bits. So, I'm just gonna get some pak choy on the plate. Spread it out and pop that on. Little bits and pieces on here. Slice. Done. Chicken wise. Here. Chicken. There. And then we're going to use some of our juices. Which is quite tasty. And we know what happens next, James. Oh it's no! The man himself. Oh gosh! Our stunt diner. The only bit I have to do, other than filming and drinking. Get your safety <laughs> harness on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put this over here, and for the convenience of um, not making you suffer with an an incorrect knife, I shall sharpen a knife for you just to make knife. Too sharp. I'll just get one. Do you need to some health and safety? And we have not made a risk assessment of this meal. <laughs> <laughs> I know what the method statement's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, give us a go and see how you feel about it. Okay. So, quite a challenge. Oh, yeah, that's good. Nice. Oh, that looks good to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is phenomenal. Is that okay? Yeah, that is. <laughs> I didn't think lemon chicken could taste that nice. It's yeah, that's yeah. The the sweetness from the lemon gino. It's got plenty of citrus. It's not too sweet. It's fresh. I don't feel guilty eating that like I do when I'm scoffing a takeaway. That is that's cooked to perfection. That's really moist. Got all the flavour, all the juice as well. That's amazing. Good. Let me have some with some of these vegetables. Black bean sauce is great. Good. Mm, yeah, lovely crunch in those. God, that is delicious. Glad you enjoyed that it. That is guilt-free Chinese eating, and it's got booze in it. So how about that? <laughs> well, cheers. <laughs> right, well, certainly thank you from me, but thank you very much, John. It's always a pleasure. Can I eat it now? <laughs> <laughs>